G'day everybody, Daniel here from GI Energy. Today I'm running you through the SunGrow iSolarCloud app. We go through all the basic features of the app. If you're using the desktop version, which I prefer personally, we have a different video showing you how to use that one. If you're looking specifically to work out how to put your battery on a forced charge for certain time windows of the day, then there's another short video that focuses in on that feature only. You need to do that on the desktop version. So that'll be in the video showing the whole run through of the desktop version and also that shorter video just for that function. They'll both be posted on the same day. So when you log into your app, this is what you'll see. You'll get an overview. It will give you the name of your plant at the top there where we blank that out. And the icon at the top shows the solar panels and what they're producing. The home in the middle there, what it's consuming. To the right of that is how much is going into the grid and to the left is the battery. If you don't have a battery, you won't have that icon there. If you don't have a SunGrow consumption meter, which is also some, someone sometimes referred to as a smart meter, then you won't get your consumption details either, but you will still get your solar production details. So for this site obviously has a consumption meter with a battery, so all the icons are active. You can see this system is producing 9.94 kilowatts currently. The battery is fully charged, so there's nothing going into the battery. The house is only using 3.71 kilowatts, so all of that is coming from solar and the extra 6.16 is going back into the grid. That's obviously a nice little flow chart that will give you live data anytime you log in if you want to see exactly what your system is doing there and then. If you scroll down, I'll just flick that back to day because that's what the default is. Gives you a graph there showing your history for the day. So at the bottom, you can see the key, the orange is PV, so solar. Uh, blue is grid, light green is the battery, the dark green is the battery state of charge, and then the last one there, the yellowy mustard colour, is the load. If you pop your finger on there at any one time, you can see exactly what's happening at that time. So I've just dropped my finger at 7.50am, and you can see all the different breakdowns for what's happening with the different units there at that time. And you can scroll back and forward throughout the day to see what's happening at different times. If you continue to scroll down, it gives you just the production and you can toggle on and off the data from yesterday. Same again, sorry with the graph above, you can also toggle those different ones on and off if you want to simplify the graph or obviously add or remove different features within the chart. Keep going down, you can see your consumption as well. Obviously all of this is in that first graph, but these other ones just give it to you in a more basic form. And then the net revenue at the bottom Again, you can sort of toggle through that and see exactly what's been happening at different times of the day. So that's your overview. If you want to look at a little bit of history, you just scroll down to these charts again and you can go into your week and it will obviously then give you a week. Once again, if you don't have a consumption meter or a battery, obviously you're not going to have all of this information. You might just have your solar production, but you'll still get the historical data there in the same format. It just won't have the other data displayed. You can obviously then click month, year, and then lifetime of the system if you want to. Pretty handy if you've got a system with a lot of history, you could go through and have a look how it's been performing over the years. If you've added or removed electrical appliances or potentially even family members from the property, you'd be able to see how that's affected your use over time. So it's quite good to see those trends. It's also good just to make sure that your solar system and your battery is not degrading too much over time. Obviously, just bearing in mind that not everything's going to be exactly like for like because there's lots of variables around weather which translate to system performance. So don't be alarmed if it's a small amount difference. But if you see a drastic drop off all of a sudden, obviously, there's probably something there that needs to be investigated. So that's your main page. Um, and this is where you're going to spend most of your time, I think, within the app. If there's an issue with your solar system, it's going to let you know via email. If that happens, get in touch with your installer. If it was GI Energy that installed your solar system, get in touch with us, either with the consultant that you spoke to or just through to the normal office, and we'd be more than happy to help. If it wasn't us, then hopefully whoever installed it for you will be equally as helpful. Some other features on here, if you click on device at the top, it obviously gives you all the information about all of the things that are installed at your property. This is useful if you ever need a serial number or the exact products that are installed for potential faults or you're upgrading your system, anything like that. Um, or if you're joining a VPP potentially, maybe they'll need serial numbers. You can find all of that information right here. Then in the top right, you've got your 
settings. So you can click through all of these. If there's a fault, you can go on there to identify what it is. There's no faults live with this system. There's also none that have been resolved. But if there were, that's where they would appear. Then you can look at your curve, which really is the same chart, but just in different detail. Uh, again, you can toggle things on and off there if you want to look at it in a different way. If we go back again, back into your settings, you can go to plant configuration. Plant configuration is set up by your installer and it obviously just gives you all the details of where the system is, when it was installed, all the rest of the things like that, that make sure that it displays correctly on here. Back into your settings, the next one down is firmware update. As a consumer, you should probably never have to do that. If you do have any slight niggles with your system, sometimes a firmware update can get rid of those niggles. Um, again, I would say contact your installer um, and they will probably do that for you. <clears throat> it's a bit like the old, have you tried turning it on and off yet? The firmware upgrade sometimes just gets rid of some small issues without having to go into warranties or repairs or replacements. Um, because it is just obviously that software um, issue that needs to be updated. You can go in here and edit your tariff as well. So if you click on there, you can change your tariff to the new rates. So if you get a new power bill and you've gone up or down, most likely up, unfortunately, then you can obviously change it in there. And the same with your feed-in tariff. Um, and that's really, to be honest, most of what you'll, you'll ever look at. You can, you can go into your live data if you'd like to, and that will give you a breakdown of the data in a more granular format. So rather than just in that chart, you can click into different um, parts there and see more information about electrical characteristics and how the system's behaving. Unlikely that you would need to do this unless there was something wrong with the system and an installer wanted to look at that more granular detail to try and diagnose before getting somebody out to site to have a look at potentially what's, what's going wrong. Um, other than that, the system kind of looks after itself. The main feature here, obviously, is the dashboard. And that's where most of your information is. And then, as I said earlier, if there is ever an issue with the solar system not performing, you will get an email from iSolar Cloud, and it will tell you what the error code is. You could then log in and have a look and try and have a look through those settings yourself, or more likely than not, you'd prefer just to contact your installer, and they'll be able to resolve those issues, hopefully, for you. It's a great platform, very easy to use. If we have missed something, please let me know. We've tried to keep it really simple, but if you've got questions about anything that's more technical, drop it in the comments and we'd be happy to help if we can. Thanks very much.